Good morning, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> While we're waiting for everyone to get in, um, if you look at my screen right now, uh, I have um, a good message that was sent to me by a friend. Can I take a picture of this? Oh, absolutely. Make sure you have your chat open. That'll enable us to have a uh, conversation while other things are happening. Okay. Good morning. So I just muted everybody. If you have something um, you want to say, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. But I just want to make sure there's not uh, a ton of noise on the line. We're going to get started in about two minutes. And again, make sure that you have the chat open. The voice chat or what's up the chat? Uh, the Zoom chat. All right. So while people are coming in, hey, there's Mr. Tout. Hello?
close yet. Um, question. I can't hear anything. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, I muted myself. That was impressive. Okay, so um, I think it's really important that right now we're we're focused on um, what this looks like for for the near future and possibly extended future. Uh, so. Really, I wanted to bring up a few things about um, how we establish some new routines now that we are kind of off on our own. Um, and feel free to unmute yourself, unmute yourself at any time in order to participate uh, because I'm not necessarily, or Mr. Tout's not necessarily gonna be able to see you um, asking to participate. Some of you have your video off, which is fine, um, but uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you have a question or you wanna participate. So um, the first thing that I think is really important that uh, public health officials also agree on is making sure that you are establishing a routine. Um, some things that should be part of your routine, making sure that you're doing some reading. Well, for environmental, that's not gonna be hard because of course um, we are asking you to keep up with the curriculum as much as possible. Um, the external assessment is still scheduled for May 18th, May 19th. Um, IB released some recommendations that they are not going to reschedule um, the external assessment. Um, I think we will have the ability to um, have the external assessment in November if we want it, but um, that's a long ways away and um, you'd rather probably take it sooner than later. So. Um, that, that is, so, so reading for pleasure is just as important for reading for class. Uh, and so picking up some books around the house, um, Mr. Tout, I think has some, has some leads on, on some other books and, you know, we, uh, the libraries, uh, I think are still allowing for pickups if I'm not wrong. Um, yes. but as are a lot of the bookstores and things like that. Awesome. So making sure that uh, you are uh, doing plenty of relaxing and, and sometimes it can feel like you're doing relaxing or you think you're relaxing because you're just kind of sitting in front of the TV, but that's not really, um, that's not always relaxing. Like being very intentional about how you are relaxing and trying not to absorb all of the stresses uh, that, that we're currently going through. Um, and, you know, maybe that involves exercising, maybe that involves meditation. Um, I know exercising is really important. Um, there's nothing saying you can't go outside right now, um, especially if it starts to warm up, uh, especially if it starts being nice. Go outside, hang out outside. Um, maybe, you know, bring a book outside and make that your routine, half an hour, 45 minutes every day. Um, 
And, and that all speaks to trying to get some non-screen time. Um, maybe you wanna uh, spend some time to start a new hobby. Uh, we might be at this for um, not just weeks, but months. We don't know yet. So um, starting those routines um, that allow you to, you know, really feel like you are improving yourself, um, a new hobby, a new skill, you know, something along those lines. Um, you may feel like you're going through um, this, this kind of like isolation alone. Um, so the best thing that you can do sometimes is to reach out to others, especially if uh, they feel like they're all alone. Um, maybe they're not on, maybe they're in environmental, maybe there are other 11th graders, but uh, they're not on this chat, they're not on this uh, Zoom, and um, you're not sure how they're doing, reach out to them and just say, hey, how's it going? Um, sometimes that can be really helpful to you as well. Uh, you, never might, you never know who you might connect with, who needs to hear from somebody else. Um, try as best you can to keep up with your studies. I know it's hard. Uh, I, know, I know it's particularly challenging because you don't have someone else. Uh, you don't have that regular routine of walking into a classroom and, uh, and, and being held accountable. Um, but as much as you can, try to uh, keep up on a daily basis with, with all of your studies. Hold on. Um, I think it's, it's super important, especially with environmental, because we do have the EA coming up. Um, if you don't feel like you're caught up, you do have this great opportunity. You got plenty of time um, to try to get cut up. Um, if you are all caught up, it really is a great time to review previous topics, especially as we move into um, this second to last unit. Uh, topic seven is, is the second to last unit. Um, and in order to keep yourself accountable, make a schedule for yourself. Um, I know that I'm making sure I'm up by 7.30 at the latest, which is really late for me. I don't know how that is for you, but um, I'm usually up by 5.30. So making sure that I'm up by 7.30 is really feeling like I'm sleeping in. Um, but then, you know, going and getting some exercise and, and starting my day that way. Um, if you settle into a good routine, then it'll avoid the bad routines. Uh, not trying to stay up until 3 a.m. Um, that's kind of the idea behind having these sessions start at 9.30 so that you are not just sitting there um, doing whatever all night long, playing video games, whatever, um, trying to really keep those positive routines established. So, um, whoops, well that's an interesting schedule, okay. So, what we're gonna do today um, is we're gonna do lecture 7.1 and we'll, we'll see how this goes. Please make sure that you have your, your reading done. Please make sure that you have uh, lecture notes. Uh, we're gonna keep up with all that. Um, really the only thing that we're not going to be keeping up with are labs and hands-on activities. But um, we'll, Mr. Tout and I will be grading things as soon as we can so that you'll get more, you'll probably get better feedback from us because we have a little bit more time to devote um, to just you guys. So um, let me open it up for, for questions or feedback real quick. So um, if you want to ask something or say something, just unmute yourself. Got a lot of people on right now. Yeah, this is awesome. All right. And again, if you want to get our attention, um, you can raise your hand. Go ahead, try that right now. Make sure that works. Hey, Anaya, Ariana. Uh, yeah, Aliana electronically. Yes. You don't have to read, because we probably won't see your video. Hey, Aliyah, Elena, Nadia, Mr. Velvet. All right. That's me. That is definitely Adrian. Obviously, goes without question. Okay, so um, 
Mr. Dunn, how do I, can I raise my hand or not? Uh, I don't know. Can you? I don't see it anymore. I saw it yesterday when we were fooling around with it, but. I don't know. It's weird. It's not, it's not important, but. All right. So I'm going to get the Nearpod up here. So go ahead, hop on the Nearpod. Hi, Amari. All right, is everyone on the Nearpod? Go ahead, unmute yourself if you're having any problems with the Nearpod. Hello, iPhone. I don't know who Danny is, but welcome, Danny. Which Danielle are you? Uh, Mr. Dutton. Yes, Mr. Tapp. What is the YouTube channel that you're posting this on? Uh, my personal YouTube channel, you can go to uh, videos.teach.teach.com and I will get it posted uh, sometime this afternoon. All right, so I'm putting into the chat the Nearpod code so that in case anyone isn't with us, you're all set. Hmm. Okay, so we should all be looking at the Nearpod at this point. Mr. Tao, can you confirm that's what we're looking at? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so my view is a little bit like I'm not centered on it, but I can see it. I can see like the two thirds of the right screen. Okay. Well, um, hopefully one way or the other, everyone can see the Nearpod. Um, and if you can't, if you're having any sort of problem, uh, let me know in the, in the Zoom chat. Uh, that way we can fix that. So uh, we are talking about fossil fuels. Um, that's, so topic seven is all about um, energy. Um, there are several different kinds of fossil fuels. What are those main kinds of fossil fuels? Unmute yourself if you'd like to participate. The fossil fuels are coal. Or is it something else? Coal is absolutely one of the fossil fuels. Good. Um, natural gas. Natural gas, beautiful. So what we're looking at right here is um, a graph with crude oil. 
So crude oil is the oil that gets uh, pulled out of the ground. That's the other kind of fossil fuel. And that crude oil gets uh, refined into a variety of other oils. So we're talking about like gasoline, diesel, um, all sorts of other things that we can end up putting into cars or end up putting into um, motors of all sort. So what you see in this graph is that uh, the estimated years of extraction, meaning how many more years that we can pull these fossil fuels out of the ground. And what do you notice that is different? Which, which fossil fuel seems to be most abundant here? Coal. Yeah. So we have lots and lots of coal in the ground. Um, in fact, this is kind of a low estimate of 134 years remaining. Um, and so some, some countries are heavily reliant on coal because there's so much of it around uh, and it's relatively cheap, which of course makes the problem of climate change even more necessary to change, uh, even more necessary to address because we can just keep pulling coal out of the ground, throwing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, uh, and we can do that for, as you see, about 130 more years. Uh, whereas with crude oil, uh, it depends on your estimates, but there's somewhere around 50 years of crude oil left. Um, and unsustainable natural gas, there are sustainable ways of making natural gas, but as far as unsustainable natural gas, there's only about 50 years of that as well. So by the time you guys are in your 70s, um, if we keep pulling crude oil, natural gas out of the ground at the same rate, it will just be gone. Uh, so obviously that's unsustainable. That is something that we want to avoid for a whole lot of reasons, um, including the worst effects of climate change. Um, so you should be looking at the next slide. If you're not looking at the next slide, let me know in the chat. Um, what we're seeing uh, as far as fossil fuels over time uh, is that their usage, of course, has increased. Um, but there is one fossil fuel whose usage has decreased over the last decade. Which one is that? Nobody want. Go ahead. All right. Yes, it's coal. Uh, so in the last 10 years, we have seen coal drop off big time. It's dirty. Uh, there are all sorts of countries that are de-emphasizing and removing what are called subsidies which are ways to uh, make it cheaper. Um, they're, they're removing that incentive for people to, to use coal and increasing the incentives to use natural gas. So you should be able to see here, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna show you the, the difference over the last 10 years, natural gas has increased greatly and coal has decreased. Uh, that has been the major emphasis in the United States um, a lot of folks, uh, a lot of folks in the United States um, know about what's called fracking, and fracking produces natural gas. Uh, there's less coal mining. Coal mining tends to remove the tops of mountains, uh, so that has been a point of emphasis for the EPA uh, to stop removing the tops of mountains uh, for no other reason other than we would like to keep the tops of our mountains. Um, and so we see that petroleum, it, it changes, right? Petroleum is oil, uh, gasoline, diesel, all that stuff. Uh, we see that it goes up and down over time. Um, nuclear increases to a, a certain extent, but is flattened off. Uh, biomass actually has increased um, significantly. And what that is, is that's biofuels, which are completely sustainable. Um, and then there are other renewables. And so that's your wind and your solar and all that stuff. Hydroelectric would be dams, um, but other renewables are increasing. But if you see the level of other renewables, it's way lower than it needs to be. So 
Um, those need to be bumped up over over here. All right, they need to get they need to get to uh, the same levels of natural gas and coal for to in order to have um, enough of an impact. Um, so the impacts of fossil fuels do does vary wildly um, based on where you are. Um, as we see in this um, this chart in the upper right hand side here, um, this is a very specific graph, and it is examining what the effect is on a particular ethnic group of <laughs> uh, of. All right, I'm gonna mute some folks. Oh, okay, you muted yourself. Um, specifically on uh, children of uh, Latin descent. And this is due to ozone. And that ozone is being produced by burning oil and gas. So we see that uh, this is actually tracking the number of asthma attacks uh, per ozone season, meaning uh, when people start to really rev up their engines. Um, and that, that means that there is an actual health effect based on the use of fossil fuels. Um, there are a lot of ways, a lot of things that we can do about this. Uh, one of the things that we can do is to stop governments from funding fossil fuel extraction, from funding pulling coal, oil, gas out of the ground. Um, right now, we do that to, uh, actually this is an older number, uh, so probably closer to $80 billion um, that is being spent worldwide in order to pull fossil fuels out of the ground. And that's, that's governments um, actually offsetting some of the cost of that. That's not what it costs to actually pull fossil fuels out of the ground. That's what governments are contributing to make it cheaper for companies to do that. Um, has anyone paid attention to the gas prices recently? You can unmute, you can respond in the chat. Um, what's, what's happening to those gas prices? From what I noticed, they lowered the prices. Yeah. Yeah. Prices are going down. Um, and those prices are going down because right now there's a price war between Russia and Saudi Arabia. Um, and What's happening is that because of that price war happening between those two countries, we're seeing gas prices lower than, I don't know, uh, Mr. Tao, you can, you can tell me, but I haven't seen gas prices this low in probably 15 years. Um, and so, so the, uh, a big part of that is happening because oh we God. are... Uh, a, a big part of that is happening because we are actually um, funding fossil fuels. All right, so, so what if we actually, so I really like this comic, what if we actually did something about climate um, and ended up not being, climate change ended up not being a thing? Well, at worst, we end up doing all of these things, right? We end up preserving the rainforest. We end up creating green jobs. Uh, we make our cities more livable. We use more renewables. We have clean water and clean air and, and clean rivers and lakes and everything else. We make the environment healthier for all of us. And what's the worst that happens? Is that everything is better. So uh, in other words, there's no risk to doing something about climate change. There's no risk to reducing the impact on fossil fuels. So we have lots of alternatives. Um, this is pretty much a, a complete list of renewables. There are a couple others that um, you can make the argument for that are in development, but this is mostly it. So we're familiar with solar power. Um, biomass is when you take things that, that you, that take, that come from nature that you can grow um, or that you get, you get gas off a of landfill. So that's like methane you can get off of a landfill. You can burn that methane. And even though you are burning um, a carbon-based fuel that otherwise would just go to waste, 
And so you're getting the energy from it instead of uh, letting that methane just spill off into the atmosphere. And as we know, methane is a far more powerful greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide is. Uh, we can grow trees and burn them and then grow more trees. And that ends up being what's called carbon neutral. The amount of carbon dioxide that is being put into the tree is equal to the amount of carbon dioxide we're putting into the atmosphere. Uh, so even though it does produce carbon dioxide, uh, by growing the trees, we end up pulling that carbon dioxide back out. So biomass is a renewable source of energy. And just think bio, it is, comes from living things at some step. Uh, hydropower would be your hydroelectric dams. Um, wind power would be your wind turbines. Um, wave and tidal power, that's what we're looking at down here. Uh, these actually do exist. Uh, this is just a diagram. This is not, um, this is not an actual um, picture, but what we are seeing is that those turbines are spinning um, based on the tides coming in and out. Uh, and so that produces electricity just based on uh, the tides. And the tides are caused by the motion of the moon around the earth. So uh, that will continue for a few more billion years. So that is considered to be sustainable. Um, over here is nuclear fission, where we have um, a nucleus, a large nucleus of uranium that is being bombarded by a neutron and that explodes energetically, releasing that energy and causing other neutrons to bombard other nuclei of uranium, causing what's called chain reaction uh, that is incredibly energetic and allows for potentially completely sustainable energy. However, the old joke about nuclear fission um, is, uh, well, the old joke about nuclear fusion is that it's 20 years away and, and everyone has said that since the beginning of time. Um, but nuclear fission is something that is, is used right now um, and it can be uh, harnessed in places like uh, Perry Power Plant um, and there are some other local uh, nuclear power plants. Um, there's also geothermal energy, uh, which we get from harnessing the, um, the heat that's buried deep inside the earth. Um, so. Lannis had a question, uh, what two countries are having a war? Um, so I did talk about Russia and Saudi Arabia. Russia and Saudi Arabia, Arabia are having a, um, I would say an economic, not even a war, but they're having an economic disagreement currently. And they are trying to lowball each other as far as gas prices are concerned. Um, and so because they're lowballing each other, because they are um, trying to economically squeeze each other out right now, as far as oil prices are concerned, then that has driven oil prices down uh, worldwide, which is why our gas prices are low. So I mentioned nuclear power. That's when I mentioned nuclear fission. Um, and nuclear fission is a really sustainable way of getting electricity. A lot of people don't like it because uh, when you say nuclear, a lot of people are afraid. They think it's gonna be dangerous. Um, but the only dangerous part of nuclear power is how you store the nuclear waste. And that is the major concern that folks have about nuclear power. Uh, what do you do with the waste? Um, and the waste has to be stored for um, a couple hundred thousand years. And we don't know what human civilization is going to look like in 200, 250,000 years. And we don't know where a safe place is to store it. Um, so there are lots of controversies about how you store that nuclear waste, uh, how to make sure it doesn't get into the water supply, uh, generally how to make sure that it doesn't poison people. Um, so this is a diagram that shows us how nuclear power is actually generated. Um, you have to have a cool water source. That cool water source is um, pumped into the building um, and then it is warmed up um, essentially by some, um, some generators. And those generators are uh, powered by control rods. Uh, those control rods contain that uranium. 
And as that uranium releases radiation, it impacts the water. It causes the water to, or causes a liquid, I should say, in here to boil. Um, as, that, as that boils, it creates steam. It drives a generator. And then that generator produces electricity that then goes out to the power grid. Um, there's extra heat that is produced as a result. Um, if that extra heat was not taken off inside of this cooling tower, um, then it could cause a meltdown. Um, and that is what is ha that's what happened in uh, Fukushima a few years back, is that um, the cooling wasn't able to take the heat off of those control rods, uh, and it led to a partial meltdown. What about uh, Chernobyl? Uh, Chernobyl, great question. Um, yeah. Chernobyl happened um, where uh, that went one step further and it caused a full meltdown, um, releasing a cloud of radioactive gas over a significant part of um, what was then the Soviet Union, what is now the country of Ukraine. And uh, the entire area around Chernobyl is still a zone where people are not allowed to enter into because the radiation levels are so high. Um, and it was that one disaster that most people think of when they think of nuclear power. Um, however, nuclear power has killed fewer people than um, any other fossil fuel based technology. Um, we, it just happened basically all at once, as opposed to happening um, in small levels over time through air pollution. There is no air pollution that happens as a result of nuclear power. Um, the only pollution that happens other than those um, spent cooling rods that have to be stored for hundreds of thousands of years, the only other pollution is what's called thermal pollution or heat pollution, where this cool water eventually is going to be warm and it's going to either end up in the atmosphere or it ends up back in whatever the water source is. That could be in the case of Perry Power Plant, uh, Lake Erie or that could be a river. Um, and things don't like warm water that aren't used to warm water. So all sorts of fish and insects and other things will avoid that warm water. And so that thermal pollution is an actual concern. Um, Eunice, you can go ahead and type your question um, into chat and I will uh, fit in the answer when I can. How's that? So, Go ahead and type in your answer to what kind of renewable energy you think we should transition to. If you're not on the Nearpod right now, uh, the Nearpod code is HKSCG. I'm going to send that out on the chat. Great question, Eunice. Uh, nuclear power is not necessarily uh, good or bad. Um, it's very difficult to make a value judgment on, on nuclear power. Um, overall, it is very good and it will end up leading to a more sustainable future for all of us. So I think um, you can make the argument that it is um, definitely much better than any fossil fuel. Um, it would be nice if we got to a world where nuclear power was the worst form of energy that we were using, which would mean that we would be running off of a solar yeah. power and wind power based world. You can use the bathroom. So, yeah, I'm just making sure everyone's muted. Take another uh, 45 seconds to answer this question. It timed us out. Oh, I, I set a time on it? Yeah. Well, that was smart of me, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Really? Um, <laughs> so, uh, so solar seems to be pretty, solar and hydro seems to be uh, pretty popular. Um, wind as well. Non-renewable resources. I got timed yeah. out. <laughs> um, Mr. Tout said non-renewable resources, but he's saying that he got timed out. Okay. Um, I would say that uh, you all have a great handle on this. And um, yeah, hi there are some downsides to hydroelectric power. Uh, there are some fish that are impacted by hydroelectric. Um, but it is an excellent transition technology, just like nuclear power is. Okay, so energy security. Um, this is something that we're hearing more and more about um, because when you have energy security, that means that you don't have to get your energy from somewhere else in the world, which means that you don't have to bargain with other countries, you don't have to deal with other countries, uh, you can produce it all within the same country. Um, so this map is showing us, as you can see down here, the, high, the darkest red are the highest performers on energy access and security, meaning that the United States, Canada, a lot of Scandinavia, a lot of Western Europe, in fact, almost all of Western Europe, are really high performers as far as energy access and security. So is Australia and uh, Colombia. Um, and what we're seeing is that with, when you have access to producing energy independently of the rest of the world, um, that means that you don't have to go elsewhere. That means it's less likely that you are going to wage war or you're going to go to war with another country. Um, and it's less likely that you will experience spikes in prices. Um, and what we see here is a lot of the low performers are a lot of your LEDCs. A lot of those countries that um, have less control over their own energy supply and end up having to make all all sorts of deals with other countries in order to ensure the, um, the constancy of their energy supply. Um, and so this is actually, um, uh, you, you might notice some similarities between this map and the map of uh, MEDCs and LEDCs. It is not a coincidence. So if there is inequitable availability of energy, um, that can end up leading to conflict. Uh, and so that's where we get into the link between energy security and war. Um, we know that as the United States, we have gone to war several times over energy, um, including in Iraq um, a couple times now. And um, those things get impacted by a variety of um, other issues uh, worldwide, not just talking about the United States now. Um, so we know that energy security can be impacted by food security and can be impacted by water security. Um, if you don't have access to water, then obviously that's going to prime the pump for um, more conflict. Same thing with a lack of food security. You're going to end up in a situation where there's a higher probability of uh, waging war or folks having to use conflict in order to get water, food, or energy. And that can be just people within the country. Um, a lot of what we see, a lot of um, so-called terrorist organizations throughout the world um, exist because of a lack of water, food, or energy. Um, and they come about for those reasons, and they end up, um, in a lot of cases, those terrorist organizations end up um, providing for energy, water, or food for their people. And this is how they gain power, is because they're providing those things for their people. Um, how do we choose what energy to use in a particular place? Um, obviously, availability is a huge um, part of that. Um, solar energy is something that a lot of people say in Cleveland. You might hear a lot of people say, no, we can't do that in Cleveland. We don't have uh, we don't have enough sunlight or something, but that is wrong. We absolutely have uh, plenty of sunlight. Um, we get as much sunlight as Germany does, and Germany has solar all over the place. Now, what we can't do here is concentrated solar. 
concentrated solar is when you have a whole bunch of mirrors that all reflect uh, the sun's power on one single, uh, basically, solar panel in the middle. And that creates a tremendous amount of power that can be distributed for entire cities uh, or communities. Um, you, set, you tend to find those, um, at least in the United States, down in the southern United States, like Arizona, where you have uh, constant sources of solar power. Uh, wind you can do pretty much everywhere. And in fact, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of proposals in place to do uh, wind on the um, shores of Lake Erie and in fact, um, a little, a couple miles into Lake Erie so that you would look off into Lake Erie from the um, Cleveland coast and you would see wind power. Um, we would be able to pull all that wind power in and do a lot with it. Um, hydro obviously depends on rivers. You have to have a river around in order to be able to do hydroelectric. Um, we have our fossil fuels, the coal. Um, this CCS down here refers to carbon capture and storage, um, which means that you are trying to pull the carbon dioxide out of the burning of coal. And not only are you capturing it, but then you try to store it so that it doesn't end up in the atmosphere. Um, it is very difficult to do. It is an unproven technology. Um, and if someone says that they're doing it, they're probably lying to you. Um, natural gas is better than coal, but it is still a fossil fuel. It still puts carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. In a lot of places, there's no choice other than to do that. All right. Um, I'm going to skip the video for now. Um, we're going to come back to it if we have the time. So energy efficiency and conservation. Um, this is something that we all can do within our own homes. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can uh, save energy. What are some ways that, that you can save energy? Go ahead and unmute yourself and participate. Hello. Um, like getting the, um, what's it called, the double flush toilet, like the one with, yeah. Excellent. Yep. What else? It's a slow flow showering. Yep. Do you know what that means? What is that? Like the showers with less water coming out of it? You got it. So low flow shower heads work really well um, because you can still get, you know, your full shower and you're just not wasting as much. Um, instead of like two and a half gallons per minute, you're talking like a gallon per minute that um, water is flowing out. Those showers don't feel good though, so I rather keep them. Yeah, some people, some people do feel like the difference is not worth it. Um, it depends on the low flow shower head you get. Sometimes um, it, it works with replacing the amount of water with high pressure. And so you can feel like you're getting cleaner because it's working at higher pressure, but some people don't like that. They like the water to be a little bit softer. Isn't that like aero, uh, forgetting the word, but I studied it for, uh, one of the presentations is like where um, more air is like coming out of a faucet. Um, aerating, good. So, aerating. so That's it. yeah. So one thing that we can do. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and mute people again. Um, one thing that we can do is actually aerating the the water. And that helps, especially when you're, when you're drinking the water, um, that can help it feel softer. Um, and some people like the feel of aerated water as well. So you see here that one of the things that we can do right now is that we can replace uh, light bulbs with LED bulbs. Um, you can have a different kind of uh, thermostat. Um, you can put in energy efficient 
uh, fridges. There's um, something called submetering, which is a way of determining uh, how much energy the different appliances are using, and you can use them um, more efficiently. Go ahead, Alanis. Um, aren't Blue Star products or those Blue Star energy products that you see on like washers and dryer, or, I mean, washers and fridges and stuff? Yes. Yes. So if you see the Energy Star, uh, the Blue Energy Star rating, uh, then that tells you that it, it operates very efficiently. Um, and you can actually, depending on how many of those you buy, you can get a discount uh, basically on your taxes is, is how you would get that discount. Good, all right, I'm gonna move on here. Um, essentially, when you use less energy, like we were talking about on the last slide, um, that can lead to higher energy security because if you don't have to get as much energy from, from the world, then you definitely don't have to get it from other countries or you, have, you don't have to get as much of it from other countries. So the more efficiency that you can implement as a country or as an individual, then the higher your security as a country or as an individual is. Um, you can also think about it as like a daily budget. Um, if you have $100 to spend and you're spending $95 on it, uh, of that on energy, and you find a way to save energy so that you're maybe only spending $50 on energy, then that means that you have more security within your household because you're able to spend that $50 on other things that you need, like food. Um, and the same thing happens on a countrywide scale, where if we're able to spend less of our budget as a country on energy, then we can spend it on more of the things that benefit the people. So, so making sure that we're using energy efficiently is really important. All right, let's climb. All right, what do we, oh, underwater. Ooh. All right, let's go underwater. And again, if you are not on Nearpod, the code one more time is HKSEG. Oh, and I forgot I can play too. All right. So we've got eight folks. I can swim. Is that you, Mr. Tao? Yeah, sorry. Yeah? I'm I'm wondering what the music sounded like. All right, let's go ahead and get started. If you are still logging that one guy. Wait, where? That one? Oh, that's, uh, that's Eunice. Good job, Nadia. All right, Nadia's holding on the lead. Alanis is hot on her heels.
All right, Mr. Town is making a run for it. I think that's unfair. Great job, Nadia. All right. Congratulations. Oh, no. Nadia. All right, so I'm going to um, end the session in just a, a minute here. Uh, we are going to uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk about an activity and um, a question set. Um, I, oh, hello, my wand. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, we're going to go over um, a couple of other things tomorrow. And um, we're, we'll be putting, Mr. Tat and I will be putting together um, the, the second lecture pretty soon. So that we'll, we'll have that ready for you. Um, you can always check everything on Google Classroom. We're keeping everything up to date on there. And um, keep in contact with each other. Uh, make sure, like I said at the beginning, I know not everyone was there at the beginning, but make sure that you are uh, making a routine for yourself. Make sure that you are getting some exercise. You're getting outside when you can, but you're also doing your social distancing. Um, we, we care about you. We want you to be safe. We want to make sure that the uh, folks around you are safe, especially the um, elderly folks around you, um, and make sure that we're not uh, we're, we're we're doing everything that we know how to do: the hand washing and the not touching your face and um, all those other things. Mr. Tapp, did you have any anything at the last minute? Uh, no, just um, thank you guys for messaging about how to submit your notes. Uh, make sure to to put those on Google Classroom. Um, obviously, if you, if you didn't take them, if you were just participating, um, you can take your notes, right, by running through the YouTube video, or presumably they can hop on uh, Nearpod, Mr. Dutton? Yep, okay. yep, you can see the Nearpod at any time. You can also watch this whole thing again in case you came a little bit late. I'm gonna post it to YouTube this afternoon. Awesome. So anyone who is in um, computer science, um, just hold on. I'm going to end this meeting so that I can upload the video. Uh, and then I will be back on uh, in two minutes. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. Mr. Bell, get out. Bye. OK, wait. Bye. Bye, y'all. Thanks.